I've lost my uh, my bag with my iPad. And she's like, yeah, there was like some like street artist in like silly night market who has like your backpack. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, it's the kind of stuff that blows you away because it just it makes you feel so safe and it also makes you feel like taken care of in yeah. that sense. Yeah. Hi everyone and welcome back to another video and a special welcome to Meng Xuan. So just in case some of you are recognizing her from WTO. The pizza, oh. the espresso, oh. and the pasta. Go! <laughs> Although she's representing Italy for the past six and a half years, there is a, a Swiss heart pounding in there as well. well. I was born in Switzerland and my father is Swiss, so I have the Swiss nationality, but my mom is Italian. Like the Swiss army knife. It's like one packaging, but a lot of different functions. Exactly that. <laughs> why Taiwan? What what brought you here and, and why are you here? Love. <laughs> oh, wow. This shows why you like represent Italians. Because if you would have said money, it would have been Swiss. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> when I'm late, I'm Italian, and when I can't cook, oh. I'm Swiss. Simply speaking, before um, knowing my boyfriend, now husband, I didn't even really know where Taiwan was. Okay. I couldn't have pointed it on the map, I'm sorry. He probably could not point out both Italy and Swiss on a map either. Or did you meet in like Italy Actually, or Swiss? because we met in Italy, so he oh, okay. probably... <laughs> Hopefully he knows. He should have known. <laughs> <laughs> he taught me about Taiwan and then like convinced me to come live here because I wanted to study Chinese. So I went to do uh, an exchange year in China. And then when I came back to Italy to finish high school. So you did an exchange in China before graduating high school? Yes. Wow, okay, that's I, cool. It's the kind of things that you do when you're 16, 17, like you don't think too much. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna go to China. What's the big deal? I think most people don't think like that, but okay. We literally just exchanged information. That was before I went to China for an exchange. Still in high school? Still in high school. She had like the busiest life ever before high school. I have no regrets because through meeting him, I ended up here and I really like my life here in Taiwan. So he was on vacation with his family mm -hmm. and we met in the only half half day that they were in my city. And then he went back to Taiwan. And then I, when I was going to do my exchange here in China, I was like, hey, I remember this guy like, oh, he speaks Chinese and stuff. So I'm going to ask him some information and oh, how's, how's China, etc. And he was like, I'm from Taiwan. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So like terrible full pass immediately, <laughs> but we continue chatting and then like we liked each other. So it went from there. The first time we met like after being a couple actually was in China during my exchange student. So you officially became a couple before seeing each other again? Yes, that's correct. The magic of internet. Don't do this at home wow. if you're 16, <laughs> if you're 17. This, like, this, this turns into like a life lesson is like, don't try anything at home, kids. It worked for me, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't endorse it. Like I need to put up this like uh, this video is like 18 plus to be viewed. It's just like just for parents. <laughs> you did more things in high school that I have done now and I'm like 33. What would you say has been your biggest difference, like your Taiwanese life versus your, well, let's say your, your Italian life, where you were somewhat of an adult at least? Moving to Taiwan has kind of helped me understand that you connect with people not necessarily because of their background, but because of who they are as a person. Which you can yeah, find out during are. half a day when they're on a family trip <laughs> in Italy. It sounds more like how their six pack and nice smile looks like. I can show you his pictures when he was like when we met. It wasn't that. You are who you are because of your background too, granted, but there's also like some things that you deem important that are unrelated to where you're from. And I think if I had stayed in Italy, probably I would not have realized that because in Italy it was very much like if we were in the same high school, then we can hang to hang together. But like if you're from an enemy high school, then it's like the Italian mafia starts very early. Like <laughs> it feels like everyone is like starts super early in Italy. Just like mafia recruiting in, the, in, in the corridors. Yeah. So we uh, have met at WTO, the TV show. But the first time I think that we saw each other was in one of uh, Mr. Koo's videos. Yes. Talking about uh, the amazing Northern Europeans versus the other Southern Europeans, represented by uh, Mengxuan and uh, Jesus.
And in that video, you mentioned, among other things, they were very similar between Southern Europeans and the Taiwanese people mm -hmm. when it came to like food and the importance of food, late dinners and like big gatherings and stuff. I think when it comes to family, there is this uh, stereotype about Italians being very, very attached to the family, but the stereotype is mainly true because we do we do care a lot about spending enough time with our parents with our grandparents and cousins etc etc and i think taiwanese people can relate to that nowadays i eat dinner with my in-laws basically every day and oh wow yeah and do, do you like do you do the, the the taiwanese thing like you all live together like in the same like we live on the on different uh floors but we live oh. in the same building hang out with your family with your in-laws a lot nothing wrong with that but it is a requirement basically speaking to spend a lot of time together so mm. i think that is very similar the taiwanese mentality and the italian mentality that it is a thing you have to do you have to spend a lot of time together mm. and uh, family time is sacred if we would uh, flip it around then mm. uh, are there any huge differences it's not enough protests or we need like a little disorganized life Actually, <laughs> yes there's not enough protests i feel like <laughs> i complain a lot and I always say that complaining is in the Italian DNA. Although it's not always successful, <laughs> because we still have a lot of problems. But some things have changed because enough people came out and complained about them. A lot of times Taiwanese people seem less willing to, to complain. First of all, uh, if you complain, it makes you seem mafan, like you're just causing trouble. Why don't you just relax <laughs> yeah. and just... Uh, go home and be mad by yourself and not ruin everyone's time. <laughs> like, feel free to protest as long as it's at home where you don't disturb anyone. <laughs> yes, precisely. <laughs> Everyone I know has complained about overtime mm. before and unpaid overtime because I can understand that sometimes you need to stay longer in the office, but you should be paid for it, right? Because mm. you're still working. In Are we person. starting a protest like right here and now? Like, is that is that what's happening? This is what happens if you bring an Italian <laughs> into the studio. That is just like perfect mix too. It's like an Italian who loves protesting and a Swiss who loves money. So he's like, <laughs> of course, there's going to be like a money. Pay me for <laughs> my <laughs> work. A money protest going on. Yeah, no, I 100% I agree. There is a reason for why I'm like self-employed <laughs> trying like wanna be youtuber my protest will just be to ask everyone to subscribe to this channel and to to help me share this video to other people so i can actually increase my my own salary not uh, enough supporters and, uh, and watch my ads for every second that you watch my ads i get a little bit more money on my uh, my monthly income as well so that's my protest there against the the youtube gods <laughs> what would be like your one sentence or the first thing you would tr like say in order to try to explain how your life in taiwan actually is you will never lose your wallet again as a swiss it's talking again impossible <laughs> yeah as a, as a swiss person but also as an italian person who has to warn their friends about pickpockets when they visit like busy mm. tourist uh, spots in Italy like keep your backpack in the front don't don't like participate in those games like the cup games or whatever checking my wallets every like four steps just to make sure that I have everything it has happened last week to one of my friends she didn't realize that her phone was gone for two hours because you don't check what? it anymore she was like, i checked my like i literally i literally not without my phone for more than like 17 seconds i think that's like my, my <laughs> record she was like on the beach so she was having fun with her friends and then where's my phone i want to take a picture where's my phone and then they called and this old lady was like how did you not realize your phone was gone for two hours <laughs> The most extreme case is uh, me and my friend, we were going like along the street. She dropped her, her wallet. Like within five minutes, she gets a phone call from the police station that says, hi, this is like police, police, whatever. We have your wallet. And then she's like, no, you got the wrong number. No, this is your ID. This is like whoever. She's like, okay, let me, let me check my bag. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, where are you right now? <laughs> it's like, so then someone had like returned the wallet to the police station. This was like a long down park. So we were like in the intersection of down park. And then we walked along the entire like length of down park. But before we reached the end, she had dropped the wallet someone had returned it to the police station and the cops had called her found the id found the identity found the phone number called her before she's even realized that it's gone and i was just like that's amazing and of course 
Like all the money is there, all the cash is there, nothing is missing. And only in Taiwan. Only in Taiwan. I've lost my uh, my bag with my iPad, and I also didn't realize it actually. This was in Shilin Night Market, in the middle of Shilin Night Market. I was just like sitting down. I got like my portrait like drawn from like a, a street artist. Mm -hmm. Sitting down, left my bag, went back home. I get a phone call from a Taiwanese friend of mine, and she was like, "Hi, um, you forgot your bag." And I was like, "Shit, yeah, you're right." Like, how? Wait a minute. How do you know that I forgot my bag? You're not even here. And the only reason for why they called her was because I didn't know her last name. Mm -hmm. So in my phone book, it was like Sarah Taiwan. <laughs> so they they found they found her name under like Taiwan and they called her and then she called me saying that like and she she was like at home like doing something. She had no idea what was going on. So she's like, "Yeah, there was like some like street artist in like Shilin Night Market who has like your backpack." And I was like, "Yeah, that makes sense." <laughs> <laughs> and that was like during my first time as an exchange student here too. And I was just like so happy and and so amazed by like the the friendliness and the honesty of yeah. the of the Taiwanese people. Yeah, it's the kind of stuff that blows you away because it just it makes you feel so safe and it also makes you feel like taken care of in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Like welcome because if you were not welcome, then who cares about whether Except your your wallet is here, or your phone is here, or whatever else. As it's long just as money. all the IDs come back, oh my god. Yes. But even if they were not to come back, it's so fast yeah. to like do everything all over again, like ARC for us. Even if you lose it, you tell them that you've lost it, yeah. and then they're like, okay, fill in those forms, come in, and as long as you have the the famous stamp and the bank book. If you lose those, or you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, but that's a whole other story. And at, as a Swiss, I don't think we're gonna go into that topic right now. There, uh, bank. Yeah, we, we're not. not we're not gonna talk about the Taiwanese banking system with the, with the Swiss. Instead, I just wanted to know. So, do you have any uh, tips, advice, or something that you wish that you would have known before coming here? Well, yes. And thank you. Next thing, question. Uh... <laughs> I think my biggest regret is that when I first came to Taiwan, I only knew Taipei, basically. Mm. I sort of, right? Story of my life. You kind of hear about these other places like magical Ruye uh, Tang and like... I, I didn't even hear about that, to be honest. So I was an exchange student for six months. Only place I heard about was Orchid Island. And someone explained Orchid Island to me as this island have a power plant uh -huh. and they have a lot of trash. The picture they painted was that it was like literally an island filled with trash and in the middle there was like a power plant. So no one liked it there. I don't know what that story is about, but that was like, it was the only thing I knew outside of Taipei. Even just the concept of uh, going round the island. Have just you done it after six and a half years? No, <laughs> I have not. Am I not the worst? Taiwanese, uh, like... Ambassador? In the yeah, I am ashamed of myself. <laughs> Just recently, I, for the first time, was on a motorbike behind my husband and I felt like, oh my God, my dreams from before I came to Taiwan are coming true because, like, that is, like, the thing you have to do in Taiwan. You don't even ride a scooter. I don't. Should I go Oh now? my <laughs> God. Ma <laughs> cazzo. Yes. Very yeah. good, very good. I've never been to Italy. How is that never. possible? I don't have to. I have the See Philips you. Sueco Latigo 3246 uh, coffee machine. I'll be happy to, to take you either back on my scooter. Are you a fairy godmother? <laughs> <laughs> then uh, maybe we can make some proper exploring Taiwan videos together as well. And of course, if that's something that you want to see, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video to show your support, and please also help me share this video with someone that you think should know a little bit more about Mengxian and also her whole story on how she fell in love with her high school sweetheart, moving here to the other side of the world, um, going against, I'm sure, her family's uh, <laughs> hopes of staying there with her Sunday dinners. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. It starts with L as in like. Ends with S and in subscribe. Please do both and see you all in the next one. Bye bye. I don't know if I'm supposed to say bye bye. But <laughs> starts with L, ends with S. It's good, what no? A genius. I'm so proud of that ending.